Hello, welcome to today's video. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. And if you're not, I hope this video can bring you a little bit of comfort. So in today's video, I thought it would be fun to go through books that have given me core memories. I have a lot more books that are in my favorites, but these books have specifically left an imprint on me. And I thought it'd be fun to go through this video, tell y'all the stories behind these books, and to give y'all book recommendations. So if you've read any of these books, let me know down below and I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. So let's get on with the video. Starting with the first book is Someone to Love by Melissa De La Cruz. A lot of y'all may know her because she wrote the Owl of the Lost series which became the Descendants movies. So before I get into my thoughts and feelings for this book, let me give y'all a brief summary. Y'all follow Olivia who's the daughter of a well-known politician and her father is now currently running for governor. Due to being in the public eye and having some high school drama, she forms a lot of insecurities. Here is where I would like to place a trigger warning because this book goes into eating disorders, self-harm, and toxic relationships. As she goes through this, she hits a really, really low point in her life where she puts her life in danger. And it's then in that moment when she realizes the person she needs to seek validation and acceptance from is herself. The ending isn't really a big spoiler. This book is a self-discovery, self-love book. It's mainly just how she gets there that's really important, really impactful. So I read this book whenever I was in eighth grade and at this point in my life I was learning to love myself. And so reading this book and reading this fictional story it really helped reinforce the importance of accepting and loving yourself and loving the person that you see in the mirror so this book was my favorite book until the other day when I finished a new book and I will be talking about that book later in this video the next book I want to move to is actually a set of books because they're all in a series the To All the Boys I Love Before series by Jenny Han. I feel like everyone knows this series, it's really popular. It became a Netflix movie series. So if you don't know what these this series is, you start off with Laura Jean who throughout her life writes these letters to all the boys she's ever loved. And now she's in high school when these letters all get sent out. And you just go through her finding love and romance through these series and it is so cute it starts with a fake dating trope i read this book at the beginning of quarantine i remember i had all my lights off i had my fairy lights on and a candle burning when i finished this book i binge read it in a night and i remember i loved it so much i told my mom i was like i need the next two books so we got them on amazon i finished the next two books in like a day or two and I absolutely fell in love with the series. If you love the movies, then you'll definitely love the books. The books have so much more detail and certain events that I think really added to certain relationships that weren't included in the movies, which is obvious in a lot of book to movie adaptations. But this series was definitely, it definitely reinforced my hopeless romantic character trait. Now the next book I'm going to talk about is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. This is actually about to become a movie soon and I'm really excited to watch it. So in this story you follow Kaya when at a young age she was abandoned by her family and she was forced to raise herself in the marsh and all the town people form this prejudice and hate against her and you just follow her as she's growing up and raise herself in the marsh. This story also has a murder mystery involved which all ties in together. It is very well written. I love this book so much. I was one of two I had to read for a summer reading assignment coming into junior year and I finished it in two days I think because once I started reading I really struggled to put it down. I have so many quotes from this book written on different pieces of paper, written in my journal, written in my notes. It's They're everywhere because the writing is so phenomenal. I absolutely loved it. I loved it so much. I actually, my first YouTube video was about it. 
where I wrote discussion questions and where I gave my thoughts on certain characters, symbolisms, plot points. So I also have a Google Doc linked in the description of that video. So if you've read this book and want to answer the questions, I would love to read your responses. Moving on to the second book I read for my summer reading assignment is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. In this story, you follow Cadence Sinclair, where every summer her and her family go to their private island and she always hangs out with her cousins. And they always have a great time, right? But one summer, a tragedy strikes. And the next summer, Cadence returns to the island and has to find out what happened and what caused this tragedy. I'll start with the negative reviews I've heard from this book is the fact that it really surrounds itself around the privilege of this family. As I said, they own a private island. There's some racist comments made towards certain people. And the twist in the end, some people think that was unrealistic. As for me, I loved this book. I read it in like five hours. And by the end of it, I just held the book to my chest and stared up at my ceiling, questioning life. I, I was sobbing at the end. I was a hot mess. This book is written in first person. So I felt like I was there. I was a part of this tragedy and this twist. And I guess I can understand that this tragedy is unrealistic because it's kind of a situation that was caused by people being dumb and making dumb mistakes. However, I saw it as something that this was a dumb mistake that could really happen somewhere because people make dumb mistakes all the time and this one just happened to end very tragically. And I felt the pain that Cadence felt during this and it was so heartbreaking because even though it didn't seem realistic, the outcomes of this are real outcomes that could affect people and it was, it was just heartbreaking. The writing is very simple and easy not simple but it's easier to read and get through really quickly and almost every word is foreshadowing or a flashback or a callback and every word i feel like is almost a double entendre there's always a hidden meaning to everything and it's very psychological too so it's a book that you'd want to read multiple times to try and pick up on all the clues Moving on to the last book is The Shadow of the Wind, written by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. And this is my new favorite book. This is the book that replaced Someone to Love. I finished it a few days ago and I'm obsessed with it. It's dark academia, feels like it was written in the 1800s during the dark romantic era. It's phenomenal. The writing is so mature and so thought out there's so much detail and imagery in every sentence it's packed full with details and rhetorical structures it is beautiful so a summary of this book is in the book there's a book called the shadow of the wind written by julian carax julian carax was mysteriously murdered and years later after his death a young boy finds his book the shadow of the wind and he ends up trying to solve what happened to this author but along the way he uncovers very dangerous people and secrets that were better left for Gaian. and along the way you end up meeting a man who's going around buying all of julian carax's books and burning them this book has so many subplots so many romantic stories happening at once the best way i can describe it is as a mangrove tree how it's one tree but all the roots are intertwined and connected that you don't know where it starts and where it ends. It is amazing. <laughs> That's really the only way I can put it. And if you like series, this is a perfect book for you. This is a book of a four part series. I officially have the second one coming in the mail and I'm so excited to read it. However, I do want to give a little warning in this book, there are some spicy scenes but these scenes when you're reading them they don't feel like you're reading smut which if you don't like that you can really skip over those parts but as i said whenever you're reading them it feels like you're reading like a classic so pure and so beautifully written it's simply a wonderful book 
I think everyone should read it, especially if you like Dark Academia, Dead Poet Society. It's all the same thing. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you know these books and the imprints they have left on me. I hope that if you want to read these books, they leave a positive impact on you too. And if you have read these books or do read these books, let me know your thoughts and opinions on them down below. And thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day today. That's enough of that. It's forced to... Yes? Okay. My dry air. Dry air. Finally. Third try and I finally got it.